Hello and welcome to another video. I am Paul Lucas and this morning at 5 a.m. I am at San Francisco International Airport about to head to Newark, New Jersey with United Airlines on one of their premium service transcontinental routes. Now, some of you who have been following this channel for a while know that I actually had a few problems with United Airlines last year. I took United on a 757 in premium service last year to check out their flagship product across the USA and I had a terrible, terrible experience. I won't go into those experiences now, but what I did do at the end of the flight was book again for the following year and here I am now. Now, this flight was originally supposed to be on a Boeing 787-10 Dreamliner with the new Polaris C and that's why I booked this particular flight. However, United changed the aircraft to a 777-200, which is one of the more standard aircraft you'd find plying this particular Transcon route. So it has some slightly older seats, but the service on board will be exactly the same. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get cracking. United operate from Terminal 3 here at San Francisco. My business class ticket comes with United Premier Access, and this means I can use the priority check-in lanes. The check-in kiosks themselves proactively ask you whether you want to change to a different flight on the same day and will even let you look at the seat maps for the aircraft. Sadly, there were no 787-10s flying from San Francisco that day, so I stuck with my original plan of flying on the 777. The kiosk will also weigh your bag for you, but you have to take it yourself to the bag drop. The atrium is located in the middle of Terminal 3 and contained a bit of a surprise. These are replicas of RAF Hurricane and Spitfire aircraft. My ticket entitles me to entry to the United Club, which is found right next to the atrium. The lounge also features a fizzy drinks post-mix machine, but it's a little bit too early to be indulging in that kind of sugar load. I really like how United have tried to make the lounge reflective of its locality, San Francisco. Many airline lounges make a point of feeling like they're in no place at all, so I really appreciated this. There's a business centre with workstations in a conveniently quiet place at the back of the lounge. But as for me, I was happy just to grab a little snack and watch the aircraft. So just heading down to the gate now, it's only about a two minute walk from the United Club just behind me. United uh, have a really great app in fact, it's one of the best things about the airline and with just 10 minutes to go until boarding starts I was able to change my seat assignment from the one they gave me on the south side of the aircraft, the right hand side, to one on the left. Today's aircraft is a 777-200 which often plies the transcontinental routes. The airline also uses this aircraft to service long international routes too. Okay, so here we go, United Premium Service to Newark. Let's see how it is this time around. I'll admit to feeling a little bit nervous when boarding this aircraft. Last year I had three very poor experiences with United and I was hoping for something better this time. This aircraft is laid out in a 2-2-2 configuration. When I got to my seat I found a blanket and pillow already waiting for me. For those of you familiar with my video on United's Transcon service last year, yes, I did check out the toilet before boarding, and thankfully, it was in good working order and pretty clean too. It's also a lot bigger than the 757 lavatory.
sadly the cloud is too low for us to get a good look at San Francisco downtown, so let's have a look at today's route map. San Francisco to Newark is 2,563 miles and the flight does this distance in 5 hours 20 minutes at 37,000 feet. United has consistently good Wi-Fi and logging on was the first thing I did as soon as it was activated. The plans available are fairly cheap in my experience and I found the connection speed to be good as usual. The in-flight entertainment screen is a decent size and comes with a fairly responsive touch screen. There was also a good selection of movies and TV to choose from. The main thing that I dislike about this seat is that the power outlets are way behind you on your shoulder and it's very difficult to reach them without standing up. The seat control functions are however sensibly placed and there's also a remote to save you stretching forward and using the touch screen. The table is stowed in the centre console and will fold out like this and can be moved forwards and backwards. Finally, there's a small storage shelf underneath the screen and a very small privacy partition which only really works when you're reclined. The bedding on board is by department store Saks Fifth Avenue and it's among the best anywhere in the sky. This flight departed at 7.30am Pacific time so the meal on board is breakfast. Now, breakfast is a meal which is usually not terribly inspiring on planes so I was interested to see what United made of it. I went for the chicken chorizo chili verde and I have to say I was really pleasantly surprised. The meal looked really good and very appetizing. This was one of the most flavoursome dishes I've ever had for breakfast on board an aircraft. Great work United Airlines. The eggs were also of a great consistency too. With such an early start behind me and a full stomach, it was time for me to grab a quick nap. So I got the bedding out, converted the seat into a bed and managed to sleep well for a couple of hours. I woke up as we were passing Cedar Rapids in Iowa. Our flight path also took us over Chicago, affording us great views of O'Hare Airport and the shoreline of Lake Michigan. With just over an hour to run, the second meal is served and it comes in the form of a very small half wrap. I think this is okay on the eastbound flights. My flight landed at just after 4pm local time, which meant that I would be getting dinner in a couple of hours anyway. Before landing, I ordered United's signature cocktail, the old fashioned. Let's give this a try. The old fashioned is really popular, but I think I was having that a little too early in the day to appreciate it. This experience cost me 659 US dollars one way. That's about 518 pounds sterling. This was a much better experience than the one I endured last year. Filthy linen, a grimy cabin, a toilet which was so broken it was a hazard, and utterly terrible food all added up to a very poor value experience. So I was delighted that United had managed to change my perceptions this time around. The next video on this channel will be Delta One Transcontinental on their 767. That's a product that competes directly with this one and believe me, you will not want to miss that episode. I'm really interested to know what you guys think of United Airlines. Let me know in the comments below. As for me, I'm going to sign off now and say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.